Hello everyone. So in this video, I will be explaining you how much, how many calories that you miss. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hello everyone. So this video it's all about ATPs that we get from glycogen breakdown. So in the glycogen breakdown occurs during fasting condition. So how many ATPs that we get, especially uh, glycogen breakdown that is going on in the skeletal muscle and in the peripheral tissue, ATP gain from the glycogen breakdown. That's what I am going to explain in this particular video. So we have a glycogen here. So glycogen is broken down into glucose 1-phosphate that will be done by glycogen phosphorylase enzyme and the debranching enzyme. So I have a video on glycogen uh, degradation, glycogen synthesis. You can watch a video on the uh, link that is appearing on the right corner right now. So once you get glucose 1-phosphate, so this glucose 1-phosphate can be converted into glucose 6-phosphate. And now this glucose 6-phosphate in the peripheral tissues like skeletal muscle, it has to undergo glycolysis to give ATPs. Okay? Now the glucose 6-phosphate undergoes glycolysis and in the glycolysis step, so you get fructose 1,6-bisphosphate that is fructose 1, 6 BP from fructose 6 phosphate. During this particular process, there will be requirement of 1 ATP. So I will write 1 ATP there. So in red color, that's minus 1 ATP. So ATP is consumed in that particular step. Now once you get fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate, so it will be converted into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. And so we have fructose and 6 bisphosphate that's a 6 carbon molecule so effectively you get two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate now this these two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate they will undergo a reaction catalyzed by glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase and will become two molecules of 1 3 bisphosphoglycerate now during this process there will be production of NADH plus H plus. So, two molecules of NADH plus 2H plus will be produced. Now, these two NADH plus H plus, they can get into mitochondria, undergo electron transport chain to produce ATPs. So, if they undergo electron transport chain, so this is all going on in the cytoplasm. As you all know, electron transport chain is there in the mitochondrial matrix. So it is attached in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So it is NADH plus H plus they need to be transported there. And that can be done by two shuttle mechanisms. One is glycerol phosphate shuttle mechanism which will transport cytoplasmic NADH into mitochondria as FADH2. So if the shuttle mechanism is glycerol phosphate shuttle mechanism so you are going to get 2N FADH2 there. And if the cell uses malate aspartate shuttle mechanism, so NADH plus H plus in the cytoplasm will be transported into mitochondria as NADH plus H plus. So it means by using glycerol for sorry, malate aspartate shuttle mechanism, you are going to transport this NADH as NADH plus H plus only. So there, are, there is a difference here. So, it all depends on which shuttle mechanism your cell is using, but by default, most of our cells, they use glycerol phosphate shuttle mechanism. It means they will transport cytoplasmic NADH plus H plus into mitochondria as FADH2. As you all know, FADH2 is equivalent to 1.5 ATPs in electron transport chain. I have a video on electron transport chain. You can watch that video in the link that is appearing in the right upper corner right now. Now, FADH2 in the electron transport chain is going to give you 1.5 ATPs. We have 2 FADH2. It means you get 3 ATPs from here. If it is a malate aspartate shuttle mechanism, say in neurons or some special cells where there is a high requirement of energy, they will use malate aspartate shuttle mechanism. So during that time, these NADH plus H plus will be worth 5 ATPs. Why? Because 
1 NADH plus H plus is worth 2.5 ATPs. Okay, that's the fate of cytoplasmic NADH plus H plus. Now let's move on with the glycolysis. We have 1, 3 bisphosphoglycerate, like 2 molecules of 1, 3 bisphosphoglycerate. So they will, again, this will undergo further reaction, makes 3 phosphoglycerate. So you get 2 molecules of 3 phosphoglycerate. And during this reaction, there will be production of 2 ATPs because it's a substrate level phosphorylation done by phosphoglycerate kinase enzyme. So you get 2 ATPs here. So there will be production of 2 ATPs there. Now this 3 phosphoglycerate, furthermore, it can undergo, it will undergo glycolytic reaction. So it will become, these are all reversible reactions here. So become 2 molecules of 2 phosphoglycerate and then it will become 2 molecules of phosphoenol pyruvate and this 2 molecule of phosphoenol pyruvate will become 2 molecule of pyruvate, pyruvate here. So during this process pyruvate kinase enzyme it is going to produce 2 more ATPs. So there will be production of 2 more ATPs here. That is again an example for substrate level phosphorylation in glycolysis. Okay. Now you have 2 pyruvates. These two pyruvates in all the cells having mitochondria, electron transport chain, having sufficient oxygen, they can get into uh, mitochondria and be converted into acetyl-CoA. So two pyruvates will be converted into two acetyl-CoA molecules, acetyl-CoAs. Now the thing is, pyruvate is a three carbon compound, acetyl-CoA is a two carbon compound. So during this process, there will be release of two molecules of carbon dioxide here because we are looking at two molecules of pyruvate into two molecules of acetyl-CoA and also there will be production of two NADH plus two H plus here. So two NADH plus two H plus produced here and as you see pyruvate into acetyl-CoA formation is going on in the mitochondrial matrix itself. There is no need of shuttle mechanism here. So these two NADH plus H plus they will be worth five ATPs. So these are worth 5 ATPs there. Okay. Now, two acetyl-CoA molecules, so they can undergo TCA cycle, individual TCA cycle. So it means you have two TCA cycles going on here. One TCA cycle, TCA cycle 1 and TCA cycle 2. TCA cycle 2. In each TCA cycle, there will be release of two carbon dioxide molecules in each of them two carbon dioxide released and also each TCA cycle will give three NADH plus H plus, one FADH2 and one GTP. So if you calculate the total number of ATPs that you get from there, it will be 10 in each. Each TCA cycle will give you 10 ATPs each. One TCA cycle 10 ATPs and second TCA cycle will give you 10 ATPs. So ultimately what we have done here glucose 1-phosphate coming from glycogen is burnt down into 6 carbon dioxide molecules. See these 2 carbon dioxide here, 2 carbon dioxide here and 2 carbon dioxide here. So 6 carbons are released as carbon dioxide. So that's a complete oxidation of glucose 1-phosphate there. Okay. Now let's calculate how many ATPs you have produced. So a consumed non ATP like glucose oxid glucose on phosphate oxidation into 6 carbon dioxide. We have consumed on ATP initially at phosphofructokinase 1 reaction, and then you have made 3 ATPs here. So 3 ATPs are produced, and then if you are using glycerol phosphate shuttle mechanism, let's look into glycerol phosphate shuttle mechanism. 3 ATPs produced and 2 ATPs produced here, that is total 5 ATPs there and two more ATPs produced here and that is basically seven ATPs and then five ATPs produced here at pyruvate dehydrogenase step. So seven plus five here, so that is 12 ATPs and then 10 ATPs produced here and 10 more ATPs. So 20 plus 12 ATPs. So that is total of 32 ATPs you got there. Now you need to take out this ATP here so that is minus 1 ATPs, so minus 1, 32 minus 1, so you get 31 ATPs. So total, you get 31 ATPs on oxidation of glucose 1-phosphate coming from glycogen in this skeletal muscle. So for every glucose 1-phosphate that you get, your, your skeletal muscle is going to get 31 ATPs. Now, 
how about other tissues if they use malate aspartate shuttle mechanism so in a malate aspartate shuttle mechanism you get 5 ATPs here instead of 3 ATPs see glycerol phosphate shuttle mechanism uses gives you 3 ATPs whereas malate aspartate shuttle mechanism gives you 5 ATPs so there is a difference of 2 ATPs there that is the only difference here all the other numbers will be same so all you got to do is just need to add 2 to this number so instead of 32 you add 2 extra 2 here 3 instead of 3 you are taking 5 so difference of 2 so that is 34 and you need to take out this 1 ATP here and that is minus 1 ATP so it means you get 33 ATPs so depending on the shuttle mechanism if you are cell using glycerol phosphate shuttle mechanism you get 31 ATPs if your shell cell is using malate aspartate shuttle mechanism you are going to get 33 ATPs okay and this is what is the ATP gain from oxidation of glucose 1 phosphate coming from glycogen okay this is a little different compared to oxidation of means ATP gain from glycolysis itself the difference is in glycolysis what happens glycolysis where glucose is converted into glucose 6 phosphate by glucokinase or hexokinase during that particular step you are going to consume one more one ATP here okay so conversion of glucose into glucose 6 phosphate you are consuming one ATP there it means you have consumed two ATPs those two ATPs has to be taken from this number instead of 32 minus 1 you will be doing 32 minus 2 that means you get 30 ATPs from one glucose oxidation into six carbon dioxide using glycerol phosphate shuttle mechanism and if it uses malate aspartate shuttle mechanism you get 32 ATPs okay that's the difference there so it means oxidation of glucose 1 phosphate it is worth one, one ATP more than oxidation of glucose which is going on in glycolysis or coming from glucose molecule that is all about uh, ATP calculation from glycogen uh, breakdown product that is glucose 1 phosphate and also I touched upon glycolysis complete oxidation into 6 carbon dioxide coming from glucose. Thanks for watching.